Hi guys and welcome back to the Krupa Around Town YouTube channel and today this video is a little bit different usually I do beauty, makeup, those kind of videos I absolutely love them but this is Ambo, my boyfriend we've both been through something hey. quite crazy so as you know last week in London there were the terrorist attacks in London Bridge and we were there so we haven't been able to do much this week it's been really difficult so I haven't really even been able to talk about it a lot so I thought making a video might help me and it might be interesting to know sort of what happened and our views on it so that's why we're making this video today so where do we start so we went for dinner with two of our friends Amit and Sita and we were in the breakfast club and the next thing we know at around it must have been about 10 past 10 we start started seeing people trickling and running so when I saw that I didn't even think I think I think it was just you don't you don't really think anything's happened you think no. people are just running I genuinely thought people were running from the rain and I know that sounds actually ridiculous but like in London those kind I mean, of you, things the thing is you just can't you don't think of it being something like that at the time yeah. Um, and I think we saw somebody lying on the floor across the road. We thought it yeah. might be somebody, like a drunk person or something. something I like genuinely that. thought a guy across the road was drunk and a security guard caught him, but the look on that security guard's face across the road sort of gave it away that something was wrong. And then at that point, we were sort of stuck in Breakfast Club. Um, they wouldn't let us out, and mm. we didn't even know at that time. We didn't know. I mean, I think, I think it was, um, I mean, we saw. Lots of kind of uh, like blue lights and you know police sirens and things going, um, and I think the point. I don't know if you'd agree. I think the point at which it started becoming a bit more. I'm gonna hang on a second. Something is really wrong here. Was then when people were, we could hear people screaming. Yeah, I mean we heard of, yeah a lot of screaming, but also the gunshots. Yeah. I think for me, as soon as I heard gunshots, I think it's one of those sounds where when it happens, you might not have heard one before, mm. but when you do hear one, you know exactly what it is. Yeah. And I think as soon as I heard that, I just knew we needed to get we out. We needed to get out of there, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, uh, the security on the door at Breakfast Club was like trying to keep people in, but then I think when, the, well, judging from a few days later, we found out that the attackers were going inside the restaurant. Um, then you think back. Of course, You yeah. think back and you think, hang on a second, yes, that's why they got us out got and everybody out, like, yeah. the police were like get out get out get out yeah. shouting and stuff and, and at the time I think you do go on your sort of instinct and you go into a survival instinct mode so yeah. in my head all I knew was we needed to get out and with our friends we just ran and I mean the terror I felt during that time like I've never felt something like that before I just remember looking at Ambo and being like do you know I've never we seen need... you look like that? <laughs> I know. I've never Usually seen you that scared Usually we're quite yeah. calm and collected, yeah. but it was just like the most. It's something that you know, you're like you can't really explain. I mean, I think, I think it's been a bit of a blur like this whole week. Yeah. Um, and just trying to kind of get your head around it, you know. Yeah. And trying to be able to get some sleep, and it's yeah, just yeah. you're constantly thinking about where you were and the fact that it's so. Um, it's, it's quite a rare thing for it to happen yeah. and you just don't think yourself that yourself you're going to be and in it like we are very lucky like we realize how lucky we are and mm. some people weren't lucky mm. but what i find really difficult is when it was all over the news the next day it was just pure sort of like facts um, I feel like sometimes the news, it's just pure facts and no feeling and that is quite a difficult thing to watch because when you've been through it, it's it's hard because you're, you've got such emotion and feeling about the situation but on the news it's like, oh, okay, so eight people have died and this has happened and it disconnects, like, yeah, I think. It's almost uh, a bit too clinical yeah. and a bit too, yeah, like you said facts and figures, it's not really like, there's not as much yeah. almost compassion would you say of course yeah yeah because i think i guess they just want um people to know the facts but when mm. you're in that situation actually so like after we started running we turned left and i saw a man on the floor and he looked like he was hurt like you could tell that something wasn't right so we ran and turned left and we got into a bar called umera um by the way all the people that work in umera Thank you, the security and the police. You guys looked after us that night. Amazingly. So they were, yeah, they were great. Amazing. So when we got in, you, we still didn't know. Like, a terrorist attack, That those words weren't said by then. It could have been anything. 
you know so at that point so we didn't know so we were stuck there and at that point we did have to tell our families yeah. what's going on but it's like you can't even say what's going on to your family because you don't know yeah so you, don't, like, you don't want to panic them either yeah that's the thing like because the thing is you're in the thick of it and you don't you don't know what's going on you don't want to panic them and you know but you can't really control their feeling either um yeah. And the mad thing is, like, my mum and dad went to a concert and they were in Hammersmith and I was out that night, um, me and Amber went to see a show and then we went to eat with our friends. And it was quite a rare occurrence that that many people in my house are out on the same night and it sounds silly, <laughs> but for that one night we were all out and my poor younger brother, like, trying to work out how to help all of us mm. and bless him, big up to you, Christian, you were amazing that night, honestly. Um, and I just think, like, when we were in Amera... I think it taught me what London is about, like everybody helped each other, everybody was trying to cheer each other up, we were playing charades with these guys from Italy, Italy. Yeah, Italian like, guys it was just so like, so much fun. I mean it was like, trying, everyone's keeping, trying to keep everyone's moral, as morals up and trying to keep everyone's, kind of, that kind of spirit, um, yeah. and, and just people's vibe, and we're just trying to keep everyone And to just remain upbeat. like really positive, yeah. and the and fact calm. that these things mm. can happen, I mean, I would have never thought in my head, gosh, I'd be, you know, in the midst of a terrorist attack, like I would never have thought that for my life, but it can happen, and you just have to, like the police said what, you have to run? You, you have to um, run, um, hide, and then tell. Yeah, yeah. so which is yeah. pretty much it's what pretty we, much did. we did. Yeah, I mean, we, we just... just as soon as the police started saying, started shouting at us from the point of breakfast club, saying, get out, run, run, run. And they were literally just, um, they were almost like escorting us or just guiding us down, further down Suffolk Street. And mm -hmm. um, when we get went into Flatiron Square and Amira, we didn't actually know where we were. No, um, no. We were just, you know, the nearest safe safe space, which was all gated and there, loads of security and everyone there. And then... Yeah. Um, as soon as we got in there, we didn't really know what was happening. It was like a yeah. state of confusion. Like, yeah. everybody's asking everybody, do you mm. know what's happened? Like, no yeah. one knew. And even on social media, like, there was, again, it's more sort of, like, hearsay. Nobody really knew no, what was going on. No. Um, and it was all starting to unfold, and we were finding out what's going on. Mm. Um, wasn't helpful with, uh, you know, batteries dying and, Oh, my gosh. You know. Like, I had, like, <laughs> obviously, like, the fi weird thing is, I'm one of them people, it doesn't matter how big, small my handbag is, I always have it on me. But that particular night, Ambo had parked literally sort of opposite the breakfast club, yeah. but slightly up the road. So I, we could see the car, and I was like, I'm just going to leave my handbag. I had my, key, like my uh, phone and my card, so I was like, that's all I need that night. And literally, I have like a battery pack, and like I'm very, very like organized. You've got like a it. survival pack in yeah, your bag. Yeah, I have a so. survival kit, and yeah. when I needed it, it just was not there. So yeah. like, I have, must have had like 40% battery, which I was just rationing, but I was getting so many messages yeah. from people about what had happened and to mm. work out whether I was safe, which is lovely, yeah. but it was so difficult. But like, thank God I found a guy which had a charger and yeah. he let me use it. It was all right. But I mean, we stayed in Omera, the bar, for about, gosh, it was like 10.30 till 6am. I think 6 about 6 in the morning. When we yeah. yeah. So we basically slept on a bar floor. Bit but, uncomfortable. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, it's just, I think it was just, yeah. you make do. And the thing was, when we like, were walking around in the bar, that bar is, it's a big place. It's and massive, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think they had a gig on or something like that. So yeah. all those people in there as well. And there was just almost like a sea of bodies sort of everywhere where people were just yeah. like sleeping wherever they could find space. Yeah. Um, we couldn't sleep though. It was nah. one of those ones where I was I was actually too scared to close my eyes. I was like, what if something happens again? Like you just get, I'm, I almost made myself paranoid. Like there was a door and it was a glass door in the bar. And I was like, is somebody guarding the glass door? Like what if somebody tries to come in? But yeah even knowing that there was so many police outside. And then eventually we did leave. When we came out, there was just, like, police vans and then... cordoned off area, so everything had, like, police yeah. tape on it. Um, and, and there was, like, this, the news presenters. Like, there was lady, Sky News out there. Like. I don't know why I found it really weird. Like, she came up to us and she, she seemed very concerned. And I know she was from Sky News or something, yeah. wasn't she? And she's like, have you guys been in a bar all night? And I think, to be frankly honest, the last thing I want to do is go on TV and, like, actually talk about that because yeah. it's, like, this is, like, real life. This is not, like, some crime scene drama that I'm watching on TV. Mm. So it's, like, yeah. And then I think I just needed time. And then we were just exhausted and we yeah. just wanted to get home, get safe, 
and just, you know, just have a cup of tea. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. And I just think, like, watching the news, which I have, I do follow the news mm. quite a lot because I just think it's good to be in the know. And I did see a statement that Theresa May made the day after, and she used the word Islam a lot. Now, I understand that they're saying that, oh, like, obviously the terrorists um, were Muslim and then they, you know, the whole jihadi movement and everything. But if I'm being frankly honest, I feel like these terrorists have sort of mental health issues and they want to kill anyway, but they're using the name of Islam to kill. I, that's how I feel. I don't feel like they're true Muslims at all because no one would do this during Ramadan. It so wouldn't. That's the thing. It, it, was, it was the they? first. I mean, it was the first day of yeah. Ramadan, right? And I've got yeah. lots and lots of. I live yeah. in an area where it's like very multicultural. I've got lots of Muslim friends, and not one of them would condemn this kind of behaviour. Mm. So that's how I see it. So I just feel like the media should not try and segregate one set of people. I think it's quite upsetting. Um, and in the world that is 2017, we should all work together as a team and enjoy diversity. That's that's an amazing thing about living in London. It's one of my favourite things. So it definitely is. Yeah, it definitely yeah. is. And uh, you know, it just really did show and just bringing that whole unity together as well. Especially yeah. in the days afterwards, there was so many people. You know. Uh, like providing shelter and food course, and everything yeah. to people who were stranded on the day and um, just uh, everybody's comments and things on the, the, the next day. Yeah. You could just see like a, a force of kind of unity of yeah. the city coming together. And the support we've had from our friends and family has actually been amazing. Yeah. So I really want to thank everybody yeah, that definitely. sent me an Ambo messages um, for our safety and how we're doing. And I do actually think I need a lot of time to kind of get over this. I don't think I'll ever be over it. But I do feel like maybe I should see someone to talk about it that hasn't been in the situation or or is a friend of mine, like just someone just completely. Outsider, yeah. yeah, so I think that's what I need. But I don't know, what do you think you need to Possibly, yeah, possibly. I think it's um I think it's just it's gonna take time. I yeah. think it would just I reckon it would just take time. Um yeah. and just talking about it. Because I, I was I was literally on the Sunday, I was on the radio, and my guys, my uh, the guys were saying, "Don't worry about it. We'll get it covered. It's fine." Mm. But I thought I would rather talk about it than you know. I want to go on. And I want to go and talk about it on mm. it and tell people that this is the situation. This is where I was, and um, and personally, I find talking about it definitely does help. And I think doing this video, yeah. um, especially for you, because you wanted a little bit more space between. Yeah. See, I find it. it really hard to talk about it because I feel like when I talk about it, I'm gonna have like a nervous breakdown or something, and I don't want to get to the point where I can't actually control what I'm feeling. I'm quite a not control, like not controlling, but I like to be sort of knowing that my mindset is straight. And I do, for my job, I do teach a lot of children and things like that. And they can't have a teacher, which is like all over the place. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I need to, I will talk about it definitely, but I go about it quite differently, don't I? Yeah, yeah. you do. So, you, yeah. Just, you need a bit of time. And, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just going to take that really. Yeah. But yeah. thank God, like we were together yes. actually, because I if... Think I think we, if we weren't together, we'd both be a bit more kind of, you know, panicked, I think. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Like yeah. panicked for each other. Yeah. or Yeah. So, yeah, thank God. But um, Kept I Kept think... me entertained for like, <laughs> you know, eight hours. I mean, yeah. I mean, we had to we had to just keep our minds off it a little bit. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, I think we played I Spy at some point. <laughs> we did. Yeah, we did. I which mean, we totally we failed at. But... A lot of games. Yeah. A lot of games. Yeah. But I think we'll leave it there then, guys. But um, thank you so much for watching us. Thank you, Ambo, for coming on my channel. <laughs> and if you want to see more videos with Ambo, do let me know. My Instagram. Put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. Put it in the I've comments. always wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now you get to do it. Put it in the comments box down below. But also, um, if you want to get in touch with me, my handles are at Krupa Around Town on everything. That's Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And also, Ambo, what are your handles? Uh, you can find me at Ambo Magic everywhere. Yeah, so do add us and um, yeah, if you want to keep in touch with everything we're doing, that'll be amazing. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.